welcome to Viking Sports Weekly. Hello, and welcome to Viking Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Al Dickman, and to start us off, let's take it to Ryan Bennett with some girls' tennis news. Welcome to M6, your hometown station. For this edition of Sports Spotlight, I'll be talking with Kayla Walker from the varsity tennis team. So why don't you start us off with how many years you've been playing tennis? Um, I've actually only been playing for tennis for two years, but I've been on varsity for both years. Very interesting. What position do you play? Um, actually, our coach kind of hasn't decided for me even after two years. I play um, singles and sometimes doubles with a different partner, just depending on who we're playing and um, who's there, because sometimes girls can't come and whatnot. Is that more of a difficult position? Um, well, doubles I think is more difficult because some, you have to have good communication with your partner and if you haven't been playing with them long, sometimes it can get a little dangerous running Definitely. into each other. Teamwork is key. Are there any team goals that you have this year? Um, this year I think is just um, to just like improve overall because we have a really young team this year and um, things are all like new for everybody and just so that we can get out there and all like just learn together. What goals do you have for yourself? Um, well, for varsity, there's uh, the first like 12 spots are open and um, I'd like to just like um, increase up that like level, like the ladder of the top 12 people and um, just to overall improve just on my skills. So I'm sure you're looking forward to your next game. When is that supposed to be scheduled? Okay, actually it's supposed to be next week, but with this uh, wonderful winter we're having, we are not exactly sure when it will be. It kind of like happens with whatever is going on outside, so um, it depends on both coaches deciding when our next game will be. So have you played a game yet this season? No, we have not. Due to the weather? Yes, they have all been canceled so far. So who would you say are some of your top players on the team? I think some of our top players would be um, Katie Tavares, and she's our first singles. Um, our fourth singles, Colleen Lance, she did a lot of scoring for us last year. Um, both our first and second doubles, which for our first doubles is Morgan Clark and Morgan Fleming, and then Christina Reitz and Ashley wessel are um, second doubles. I'm sure they're all returning players. Yes, they are. Okay. Is there a certain style that you would say your team plays by? Um, our coach kind of just tries to teach us all the basics and then he lets us go on our own and kind of learn our own style. It turns kind of into an individual sport um, and you just kind of learn how you do things best. So I'm sure that you have a rival. Um, yes, we kind of have two rivals. It's like between Port Huron and St. Clair, we kind of just battle off between them. Um, most of Marysville sports is between the teams in our area, so those are our two teams that we like to compete against most. So you said that you have returning players who are some of your top players. Now mm -hmm. what about the younger players? How have they impacted your team? Okay, well we have a ton of young kids this year and we actually have so many that this is going to be our first year having a JV team. So um, we're thinking that it's going to even improve um, tennis for the years to come be with all the younger kids that they have all four years to improve and have more individual attention being on JV so that they all have a time to play and more chances to play. And then you'll have JV players be able to move up to varsity. Yeah. So what are some improvements that you've made as a team this year? I think as a team this year um, we're conditioning more than we did last year and it's getting us more physically ready to compete. Most people think tennis is not that like much for endurance, but it is, so the fact that we have a lot of time to run and just condition all together um, as a group is helping us. So to have a great team, you obviously got to have good coaches. Who yeah. are those coaches? Um, we have three great coaches. We have um, Coach Martin, which is our head coach, and then we have two other coaches who are teachers here, um, is Mrs. Saha and Mrs. Holt, our assistant coaches. Very nice. What do you do during the off season? Um, for me, I always work out like all the time. I love working out and just getting ready to be able to play. And um, some of us girls go to the tennis house in Port Huron and practice, or we just go out on the courts as long as there's no snow or anything preventing us to play together. So is there anything you do specifically to prepare for the preseason? Um, well, our preseason, we all get together um, in one of our coaches' room, and we like to do Zumba together, and we run and go to the weight room, and we do endurance and 
just overall conditioning and kind of team bonding at the same time. So you must practice a lot. Yes, we practice every day of the week, well, Monday through Friday, um, right after school, and we do it as the varsity and JV. We all practice together. That's nice. It's good to have a friendship, especially with your mm -hmm. team. Yes. So you said that there have been cancellations for your matches yes. so far with, due to the weather. So how many do you have left? Um, all of them, because oh. we um, haven't canceled any. The um, coaches always like reschedule them so so far we are still well, on for all know. of our games or matches so you always get that extra playing time yep always. so what do you like most about the sport um I think I like tennis most because it's like you get to team bond a lot with your group but also it's um individual when you play and you get to um like push yourself and also help push your other teammates so it's kind of like a win-win for both yourself and the whole team working together. So you mentioned being an individual. Do you intend on playing tennis after high school? Um, well, I think I would do it for recreation and stuff because I'm really not like a superstar at it or anything. But um, in college, I might try to do like a club team on the side or um, anything just to keep doing it because I think it's a really fun sport. That's very nice. Well, thank you for coming in today, Kayla. Thank you, Ryan. This has been a Sports Spotlight on M6, your hometown station. Thanks, Ryan and Kayla. We wish them the best of luck this season. Now, let's check in with Chase King about what our high school students think about March Madness and the Tigers. Thanks. It's been a great March Madness tournament with great upsets. We asked a couple Marysville students who they think is going to win March Madness this year. Uh, I hope Louisville wins it because I got them winning my bracket, so I don't really know why. I know nothing about basketball, but I just want them to win because of my bracket. I think that Michigan State's going to win March Madness because, in my opinion, they have the best defense in the tournament, so I think they're pretty good. In my opinion, uh, I think Florida's going to win March Madness because I think they have the best offense and defense combination, and I feel like they can put up the points and stop the other team from scoring. Uh, I think Michigan's going to win March Madness. I think they have the best depth, and they have the best six man on the floor. I think that Michigan State is going to win the whole thing because they seem to push through at the end of the games and always come ahead and on top of whoever their opponent is. Baseball season is coming fast. We asked the same students who their favorite Tiger is. Uh, I guess Miggy is because he won a Triple Crown, so he's a really good player. Um, my favorite Detroit Tigers player is Miguel Cabrera because he can hit the ball pretty hard and he's a good batter. Scherzer is my favorite Detroit Tigers player because I feel that he's one of the best pitchers in the league and also I think that his different colored eyes is pretty cool. Uh, Don Kelly is my favorite Tiger. Uh, I think he's the best hitter and the best outfielder. My favorite Tiger would probably be Verlander. Um, he's an excellent pitcher and he's always um, helped carry the team. Um, he's been there for a while and I think he'll still help carry the team altogether. We also asked the students their opinion on how the Tigers are going to do this year with the new head coach. I don't really know who the new head coach is, but I hope Leland still has a lot of influence on the team. He still goes to games and helps out a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be a change, but I'm sure it's going to be a positive influence because they can learn like new ideas and skills. I feel like the new head coach will bring in different ideas and things, but I feel like Leland was a good general manager, and uh, I think the players just needed a better change of atmosphere. So I think the coach will make it better. I think with the teachings of their new coach and Jim Leland, I think this is finally the year that they're going to win the, uh, the World Series. I think the new head coach is going to just bring um, different aspects to the team. Um, I think it's good because he's younger and he might have different, like newer ideas that um, they haven't seen before. But I think it'll be a different change like atmosphere, but overall it'll help out. Now back to you. Our students certainly have some interesting thoughts, and I can't wait to hear the Tigers get started. I also can't wait to get back on the golf course. Our boys' golf team is underway, and Ashley Hall has more with Dalton Cracklin. Hello, welcome to Sports Spotlight on M6, your hometown station. I'm Ashley Hall, here with Dalton Cracklin from the Marysville Boys Varsity Golf Team. Hi, Dalton, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Ashley? Good. So tell me about the season. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to getting out of the cold weather and playing golf again. It's been a really hard winter, and I know the whole golf team's excited to get back out on the course. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
I mean, are the court, are they still pretty wet out there, muddy? I was talking to Port Huron superintendent, and he said the ground, it's, it's really muddy on top now, but the ground's frozen a foot under the top, and you oh, can't wow. play golf until the whole ground's thawed out because it'll just damage it. Yeah, so what are you guys doing for practice right now, then? Right now, we're over at Golf Country. We're just indoors hitting balls about 10 feet into a mat, and it's getting really, really boring. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. Mm -hmm. So how many freshmen do you have on the team this year? An exact number, I'm not really sure, probably about three. Okay. It's amazing because I wasn't here last year. I lived in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So really it's like the sophomores and freshmen. I have two classes of new kids to look at Yeah. because I wasn't here last year to see them. And it's really exciting because I haven't seen any of these guys play golf. So would you say from when you were in North Carolina to where you're at now, the golf team has grown? Oh, yeah. We had 22 kids try out this year or something. Oh, wow. We actually have to make cuts. And oh. we never had to make that sophomore year. Okay, so how many guys are on varsity then? There's six, six players that go to varsity matches. Okay, and are you one of those players? I will be, yeah. <laughs> you. Um, so who do you think is your biggest rival for the team this year? Uh, I can't remember. I know Marysville's done a lot of moving within divisions. Like the hockey team moved up division two, so I think the golf team would too. So I have no idea who our opponents were, but I know it's going to be competitive whoever we play. Definitely. Yeah. So tell me about your coaches this year. Have the coaches changed at all? Nope. Still got Paul Moretz and uh, Mr. Tobacek. I think his name's Andy, and we're never going to get away from him. <laughs> you say it's like a bad thing. I it's a great coaches. It's a good thing, and it's a bad thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they really hard on the team, make you work really hard? No, they're actually, well, Moretz is the hockey coach, and he, he's a lot different at hockey than he is at uh, golf, but he's a very, very optimistic this year. Both coaches are. They're really excited looking at everybody's swings. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your individual game more. So what is the best game of golf you've ever done? Uh, nine holes, I've shot a 37, and uh, 18 is a 76. Oh, wow. Good for mm -hmm. you. That's really good. And was that at a competition, or what was that? No, that's just... Just well, it fun. was playing competitively. My dad would drag me out to the dog fights at, at our local course, and I'd try to win him some money. <laughs> so he'd bring me out there. All right. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a really good golf story for us? Yes, I do. All right, let's hear me, it. Me, Michael Gaffney, Dylan McNeil, and Kyle King went to a golf outing this past fall at the Elks Golf Club, and we... Kyle, all day, was just obsessed with trying to get the governor off of, of his golf cart. He said he, he, was, he would toy with it, and he ripped open the seat, and he would he pulled out a plug which he thought was the governor mm -hmm. happened to just be a spark plug or something couldn't start the car back up and we i've never laughed so hard in my entire life yeah and kyle's freaking out he's like dude you got to push you got to get your cart behind me and you have to push me all the way back into the clubhouse and i said kyle we are leaving the cart here we're not going <laughs> to do anything with it and amidst all the laughing and how mad i was at him i, I turned to him and i said kyle why'd you do this <laughs> and he turns to me with the most innocent face he says I want to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That sounds and like a great story. Thank God Michael Gaffney was there, though, because he ended up fixing the golf cart. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so how many years in total have you been golfing? I started playing seriously my sophomore year. Your sophomore year? Yeah. Okay, did you play for fun before that with family? Yeah, just with my dad. I'd play maybe once or twice a month just joking around. All right, so did your dad teach you all the techniques and such? He started me off on the wrong foot, probably. <laughs> he taught me how to swing club and the grip, but then... um. Sophomore year, I learned a lot with the seniors that were there, like Daniel Bond and Trevor Spencer. And yeah. Moretz is a good golf coach. He, he helped me out a lot, too. All those names you just I know they're all really good golfers, mm -hmm. too. I actually just picked up this past season, my senior year, for fun to golf. And it mm -hmm. was pretty good. I actually, it's a lifetime sport, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not necessarily good to compete with. But yeah. it's good to know that way when you get in the business world more that you can, yeah. you know, use that later on and there's a huge difference between casual golf and competitive oh, golf too definitely different atmosphere <laughs> relax mm -hmm. but thank you for coming in today dalton i really appreciate it it's Absolutely. good talking to you yep i'm ashley hall from m6 your hometown station viking golf seems to be in good hands for another exciting season there was also some excitement at the debate table over several hot topics dalton cracklin is joined with alex french and kyle king Hi, welcome to Hot Topic on Viking Sports Weekly. I'm Dalton Cracklin. These are my experts, Kyle King and Alex French. Our first discussion today is the NCAA tournament. Kyle, personally, who's your favorite team to win? Uh, I definitely like Michigan. I think that they have the deepest uh, lineup out of any team in the tournament. Uh, I think they got the best six man on the floor, too, to come in and to cover up for some of the guys that get tired and whatnot. You're a hometown boy. Yes, sir. Alex, what are you thinking? I, I like Michigan because I'm I live in Michigan. They're, they're my team. I, I root for them all the time. But when it comes to the tournament, when it comes like who is gonna win the tournament, I'm gonna go with Florida. Florida has the best offense. They score the most points. They put the most points up as 
as a team, and they also have a good defense. And I feel like they're an all-around good team. They can bring kids off the bench, and it's, I feel like an all-around good team. I got a little bit of that hometown feel too, but I'm rooting for the Spartans, so I'm not with you guys on that one. Uh, a lot of this year has been a lot of upsets. Who do you guys personally think has been the biggest underdog of the tournament? What really surprised me was Dayton. I, you know, I had my bracket going from like the game one. I knew something was going to happen. Dayton drops Ohio State, and I was a little confused. I didn't know. Who, I didn't even know who Dayton was. I knew Steph Curry came from Dayton, but I never really heard of him besides Steph Curry mm -hmm. that he came from there. And they've been really showing us what they really have and what the true team are. And like Stanford also, like we never really thought of these teams as basketball teams. Like we like we think of Stanford, we think of football, we think of Andrew Luck. And the way I think about it is like th this tournament is really showing what teams actually are really good mm -hmm. and not just overrated. Kyle, what about you? I definitely like Tennessee. I think they're a good one. Uh, they uh, they have a hard matchup coming up though with Michigan. That's definitely going to be a tough one. Tough, definitely. It's, yeah. To be honest with you, I don't think Michigan's really going to match up right with Tennessee. People think, oh, Tennessee, you know, just an upside team, another right. bracket buster. And they're, I think because Michigan doesn't have an answer for their big man, so I feel like Michigan's not going to be able to stop them. It's really been crazy this year between Ohio State, Syracuse, Kansas, all those, and Wichita State, all those big-name teams have gone down really quick in the tournament. It's made for a lot of really good basketball. The, th um, the thing with Wichita State was Wichita State had an easy route the whole way from game one through they won 34 and all. They had an easy way, and then they finally met Kentucky, mm -hmm. a good team, and Kentucky showed them how they actually had to play. And the thing is, when Wichita State played, they beat all their players by a long, like all the teams by a large margin. Mm -hmm. They never played close game, and they got into a close battle with Kentucky, and I feel like that's what made them not be able to yeah, pull that one they out. They didn't really have a lot of experience coming down the stretch with a lot of close games and whatnot. All right, guys, that's, that was a good discussion. Uh, secondly, here we got Tigers talk. Um, the big discussion this year is obviously getting the new manager, Brad <laughs> Osmus. Alex, what do you think about him? Well, he's a new guy, you know, it's, I think this is his first year managing, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be hard on him at first. It's a lot of stress to take on. I mean, look at Leland mm -hmm. and I feel like that he's going to do all right. He's going to bring new things to the Tigers. He's going to show them something new that he can work with. But also what I like about Brad Osmus is he played for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. he, he was a catcher. So I also like that, that he, he's a hometown dude. He knows the system. If it's still the same, I feel like that it'd, it'd be good change for this. I think bringing in Brad was a good one. They uh, brought in a much younger guy for to take Leland's spot. So with uh, uh, Leland and uh, Brad, I think they'll uh, have a good route to uh, win the World Series this year. I definitely feel that Leland's still gonna have a big influence on the team. Yeah, I'm sure he will. With how, Tigers, how good the Tigers have been the past couple of years, obviously making it to a couple World Series but never being able to win it. How do you think they're going to do at the end of this year? The way I see it is that we, we picked up Prince Fielder going into last year, or two years ago, thinking that you know Prince can make a difference. Obviously he choked on us in the not the World Series, but in the playoffs, mm -hmm. didn't do so well. And I think the Tigers are lacking power besides of Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez, where his bats are. I like how he swings the bat. And I think him coming back last year really helped us out a lot. But if we can get more power with the bat and speed with Torrey Hunter and everyone else, if we can have our speed and power combination, I think we'll go far. But like Boston's always going to be good and mm -hmm. New York is looking to rebuild and we'll see how they do. Kinsler added uh, that speed a lot too. Yep. What about, what about you, Kyle? Uh, their batting, their batting has just been superb mm -hmm. for the last couple of years, and their pitching has been good too. They got uh, Verlander and Scherzer. Scherzer, yeah, but they uh, need to get some relief pitchers. Yeah, every time they go in, they just blow the game. Or a closer, they haven't had a closer in forever mm -hmm. since Valverde a couple years ago. Yeah, the forty-four zero. Same thing. I think like that too is that we always set the game up perfect. You know, we'll go in two nothing going into the ninth, and we don't want. Verlander, Scherzer, Smiley pitching 130 right. pitches, 140 mm. pitches, not healthy on your right. arm. Because he's going to go out and play five in five more games. He's going to be out there playing. You don't want him going out there hurt. Right. And I feel like every time last year when we set them up perfectly with a 2 nothing lead, mm -hmm. they'll give up like one hit, two hits, three right. hits, and then we'll go out there and blow it. A lot of indecisions on the yeah. pitchers, yeah. And we didn't have the death to go and say, hey, all right, I trust you. Let's go out there and bring him in. Right. Come in. Like New York, you've seen that. Yeah. They have a perfect closer. They had relief pitchers playing yeah. closers, yeah. too. Everyone's really excited about the Tiger season, but nobody ever stops thinking about football, too. What do you think about, uh, Kyle, what do you think about bringing in Golden Tate to the Lions? Uh, that's definitely a big pickup for them because mostly they're uh, double covering Kelvin Johnson. So if they can get one less guy off of Kelvin, mm -hmm. that's just going to add a lot for him. Absolutely. This is um. This is what I thought. I was real excited when I heard about this. I came up on my phone and 
I was like jumping in joy. <laughs> the thing is, the problem with the Lions where they led the league in drop balls last year. Always dropping the ball. It doesn't matter if you're wide open or you're covered, you know, dropping the ball, dropping the ball. And then obviously, if you keep dropping the ball, it's not going to work for you. You're going to lose. And Golden Tate, I actually, in 2000, or 2012, before he got hurt, he caught 71 balls on 74 attempts. Wow. He only dropped three balls. And that's something the Lions need. And also with the double coverage, you were always so dependent on Calvin. Calvin this, Calvin that. You know, Calvin basically had all our yards this year, like half yeah. of Stafford's yards. And now we have somebody else to go to, a number two receiver. Mm -hmm. Definitely has a lot of experience, too, because he came off the Super Bowl one last year with Seattle. So. Yeah. Yeah, it could definitely be a big season wide receiver wise. Uh, to start wrapping things up, what do you think the biggest need is for the Lions, real quick? Oof. To be honest, they really need a corner. On we are terrible on defense. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard for them to cover anyone. I think uh, Denard out of uh, Michigan State, mm -hmm. awesome corner, lockdown corner. It's gonna do real well for them. And also, if we can, if he stays in the draft, I think we should pick up Sammy Watkins. Mm -hmm the wide receiver out of Clemson, I feel like that he could also help add depth to our wide receiver core and also help take off Golden Tate and the load off Golden Tate and Johnson. Yeah, I agree with that. It'd be a big pickup for the Lions. Also, I think they need to add up front behind or to protect Stafford. I think Marcus Martin, the center, he's a 6'4 guy. He's a big guy. That'll definitely help him out in the long run. Yeah, he's also really well. So do you guys think the Lions will ultimately be over 500 or under 500 for the year? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, over 500 on the year. I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're going to win the NFC North and maybe hopefully make a playoff push, hoping who they end up playing against in the first round or the wild card, wherever they are. Mm. What about you, Kyle? Uh, they definitely, I think they're going to do well this year. they got a new coach coming in. they got some new teachings. they got some definitely some big pickups and free agency and yep. uh, trading people. I think they'll definitely be uh, a shot. All righty. Great discussion, guys. Um, I know everyone's excited to see the Lions make a big playoff run like they can. Thank you for watching Hot Topic. I'm Dalton Cracklin. My experts, Kyle King and Alex French. This has been M6, your hometown station. Have a good day. Now to round out our show, Brittany has some of the latest news. Thanks. In sports news, our Viking boys, boys and girls track teams traveled to Ypsilanti for their annual Eastern Michigan University Huron Relays. With very little practice, time available this spring, our track stars had, to, had an impressive start to their season. In girls' action, Jordan Sturter won the shot put event with a long toss of 33 feet 9 inches. Maya Rhodes placed third in the long jump with a 15 feet and 5 inches jump. Sydney Folks took sixth place in the pole vault with a jump of 8 feet. In boys' action, George Lutz placed fifth in the shot put, tossing 42 feet 1 inches. Also, the boys' 4x800 relay team placed 7th overall. The team consists of Jim Sturridge, Austin Koha, Dalton Hollinsworth, and Brennan Birch. In Viking soccer action, the Marysville girls' varsity team opened the season with an 8-0 win over New Haven. Kenzie Weingarts led the Vikings in scoring with a hat trick, and Hannah Lashbrook and Brittany Huston teamed up for the shutout in the net. Now for March Madness news. 16 teams are now competing for an opportunity to play in the national championship game April 7th, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Michigan State University is competing in the Eastern Region against Virginia, Friday at 10 p.m. The University of Michigan will take on Tennessee Friday night at Indianapolis. Don't look now, but the first pitch of the 2014 Major League Baseball season is on the way. Our Detroit Tigers will open their season on Monday against the Kansas City Royals. Justin Verlander will take the mound. In other Tiger news, negotiations between 2013 Cy Young and winner Max Scherzer and the club came up short. Scherzer will become a free agent at the end of this season. Hope he, becomes one of, he hopes to become one of the highest paid pitchers in baseball with a long-term contract. Meanwhile, the Tigers continue to tweak their roster as injuries have created openings. Relief pitcher Bruce Rondon will be out for the season with a shoulder injury and the shortstop position is up in the air. This and filling the middle of the lineup hole vacated by the Prince Fielder trade should keep new manager Brad Osmus busy all season. Good luck Tigers, Spartans, Wolverines, and Vikings. Back to you. Lots going on in the sports world. I hope you'll join us again next time on Viking Sports Weekly for M6, your hometown station. I'm Al Dickman.
Thank you for joining us for Viking Sports Weekly.